Greetings students, Mr. Little here. And today we're gonna to have a look at this image that's associated with the Industrial Revolution in taking a look at this image-based SAQ. So here we have an image as our stimulus for this SAQ. And according to the source, which is down here at the bottom, it says a photograph showing two young girls in a Labor Day parade in New York City in the year 1909. Their banners read abolish child slavery in both English and Yiddish, Yiddish being a language spoken by Jews from Germany. And while I can't actually read literally um, the Hebrew based alphabet that Yiddish uses, I can tell you that what it, the transliteration is Nida mit Kinderschlaverei, which is similar to German, although not identical, but basically means no more child slavery. And this photo is apparently from the Library of Congress. So that's an interesting photograph, but we've got some questions that go with it. And so questions are, identify the historical context of this photograph, explain how this photograph reflects one of the consequences of the Industrial Revolution, and explain how this photograph reflects one change in the Industrial Revolution. So we've got a cause and consequence and a change in continuity question here. So, alrighty, that's interesting and we'll get into that. But before we do, it's important to always remember when we're talking about short answer questions, you want to ace the SAQ you want to be able to answer that is provide a direct response and you want to be able to cite that response and support it with evidence. And then you want to be able to explain how that evidence answers the question, uh, why that evidence is the best. So you want to A, C, E, answer, cite, explain, the SAQ. And if you do that, you'll be sure to ace the SAQ. But with that said, let's have a look at this picture again. So before I give you my thoughts on the possibilities of what, my, what good answers to this question might be, I would encourage you to pause the video and think a little bit, maybe, you know, jot out some possible answers on your own. Each of these questions has multiple possible answers. So there's many ways to answer this. So I encourage you to pause the video. I won't go anywhere and then come back and we can talk about some possible answers. Okay, what are some possible answers to this question? So what's the context of this picture? Well, it's 1909, so it's in the 1900s, but it's it's fairly heavily associated with the Industrial Revolution. That would be a pretty solid answer right there. Um, you could also talk about the age of migration. Migration is also a really big theme in Unit 6. Uh, as a result of the Industrial Revolution, you have people moving around all the time, looking for work, looking for opportunity, or being forced to move as indentured servants. As for a question of how this is a consequence of the Industrial Revolution, how this is a consequence of industrially organized societies, well, this is a protest against child labor. So child labor could be one of the reasons this was a result of the Industrial Revolution, specifically child labor in factories. Um, the fact that this poster, these banners are in two languages is a reminder that in many of the industrialized societies, immigrants made up a large part of the labor force. And so they had moved from somewhere else and their culture remained with them. So maybe immigration, perhaps labor organization, which was a really big part of responding to uh, industrialization, uh, the rejection of industrial society, uh, those protesting against how industrial society worked, the those advocating socialism, possibly, as, uh, as a means of resisting what they perceive to be the wrongs of industrial society. I don't honestly know if this is a socialist organization that is being represented by these two girls. It's entirely possible, but um, we don't know for sure from this particular photograph. In regards to a change, what were some fundamental changes that came about as a result of the Industrial Revolution that we can pick out from this photograph? Well, wage labor is a fundamental shift, agricultural laborers to wage laborers. We also see regulation of the workday. I mean, Labor Day is a holiday, right? It's a dedicated holiday. The weekend is a dedicated time to not work. The regulation of time is a really big fundamental change in the Industrial Revolution. And women in the workforce, that is women working outside of the home, uh, being the norm potentially for certain classes of society where it previously had not been, uh, was also a fundamental change. That's not to say that women had never worked or contributed to the economic life of a household ever. That's not true. But women working in factories far away from home, that was definitely a big change in the Industrial Revolution. What I'm going to encourage you to do now is go ahead and pause the video and remember ACE, answer, cite, explain. Go ahead and see if you can maybe sketch out an answer to each one of those questions. Okay, so let's have a look at what I wrote. And I wanna emphasize again that what I wrote is just one possible way to answer this. There's always multiple ways to answer a short answer question. So don't freak out if you didn't write exactly what I did, that's perfectly fine. But here's how I decided to, to go with it. So 
the context of this image is the Industrial Revolution in the United States. So the United States industrialized a little bit later. So, you know, this is why we're seeing this in 1909. And, you know, if it was in Britain, it might be in the 1840s, potentially, because they industrialized much earlier. So one consequence of the Industrial Revolution was labor migration. Workers migrated to industrial societies to find opportunities, such as Jewish migration to the United States. And that was more from Russia uh, and parts of Eastern Europe, but nonetheless, you know, this one of these um, these banners is in fact in a, a Jewish language that is Yiddish. So that's the example I'm pointing to. Industrial societies offered more opportunities for individuals to earn income because of wage labor instead of debt servitude, which in many parts of Eastern Europe, in many parts of even Western Europe, in Ireland, for example, communities were stuck in a system of serfdom or debt servitude. If you could escape that and come to the United States, uh, it was a land of opportunity where you could potentially make your own income and, and move up in society. So that's one consequence of the Industrial Revolution was labor migration. Now, one fundamental change of the Industrial Revolution that we see in this picture is time regulation. For example, the weekend is a specified break from work or specified holidays, such as Labor Day, where work is not done, uh, before industrialization, most societies operated via solar or religious calendars to arrange their days. However, industrialism demands strict work hours. And so the concept of a work week and a weekend was a fundamental change to how we organized our time and thought about our time. I should also note, by the way, the weekend, as in Saturday and Sunday, is only something that came about as the result of the hard work of labor activists and labor organizers. Initially, most workers only got Sunday off, and even then, uh, not everywhere. So labor organists and activists pushed to get that additional day off. And that's, so you have labor organization to thank for the weekend. Anyways, if you want to practice some more, go ahead and take a look at those other possibilities that I talked about. But I hope this helped in some way. My name is Mr. Little. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Hey there. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was able to help you. If you appreciate this kind of work, please like and subscribe. And of course, I welcome any kind of feedback or suggestions, so feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm Mr. Little, and I'll see you next time.